proof so that the water isn't getting into the structure. What this document also prescribed is that they're basically going to complete putting the doors and windows on the first floor of the structure. They're understandably concerned that since they're not going to be renovating the rest of that facility right away, that um, ultimately they want to board those windows back up so that vandals can't throw and break windows, all those sorts of things, uh, before they, they start renovating the project. So um, they would agree to do that. One piece after talking to Travis today, we'd like to see added to this draft. It was saying we're saying that that the burning up of those windows and doors has to be somewhat aesthetically pleasing. So some kind of a code 10, uh, wet painted plywood, something like that, just so it's, it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, they agreed to, to do that and add that on there. The other piece to this, though, is the city wants to make sure that that structure is safe. Um, the engineering report was provided to us by the owner of the property basically said, it, you know, it's a big, strong old building, we think, with localized structural repairs. It can be made fairly safe without having to, to completely reframe and, and do anything all that substantive. But the engineering report says basically all plaster steel and everything needs to come down so the engineer can get in there, do further evaluation, and recommend localized repairs. So if you read through this document, that's what they're going to do is say, okay, by a certain date, when again, they're going to tear all the plaster ceiling down. By another day, we're going to make whatever localized repairs the structural engineers suggest that we have to do. So that particular structure is, again, for the exterior, um, is somewhat pleasing to the eye, is right in so there's not moisture coming into the structure, and is locally raised so it's not structurally unsafe. They are not playing as part of this to commit themselves to doing not as yet. That I think, understandably, uh, this is a pretty big thing to bite off in terms of the parking and the Nancy project. And so basically just deal with what we're making the deal with on these all, um, but kind of stopping there. And then uh, once they get through all of these things, their plan would be then to look at and tackle the ETAL structure at that point in time. Um, and that certainly, and for our discussion, there's, it makes sense and it's probably real and certainly it's progress from what we've had over the last couple of decades. And so it's moving in the right direction. The other piece that was a bit of a sticking point in that particular building is if you drive by, by there on the east side of the building, there's a little structure that kind of jogs out. It looks like it's a staircase or a stairwell or a basement or something like that. It's sitting in the setback area. And since that structure is dilapidated, since it hasn't been used, that structure needs to come down. They, they really want to give up that structure because they didn't want to have to tear down and feel like it's part of the historical feel of that building. So we said, okay, if you were a customer and spread the word adjustments, that normally would be your, your way to ask for some general waiver or exception to that. But if the board adjustments denies that, way, that variance, that structure needs to come down. So this says, yes, they're going to submit an application for various board adjustments, denies it when 60 days thereafter, they will tear that little portion of the building down. So they get rid of that setback issue on that particular um, structure. The the third piece of this is, is probably the easiest piece, which is to say, um, generally, there's also the lock that is not either the gymnasium or east hall. It's a middle green space there. Basically, part of this are saying, what's the easement in place for utilities that run to the gymnasium? But again, we don't necessarily know what we're going to do with east hall, so we don't want to commit to doing anything on that green space as yet. We've advised them uh, that I had the conversation again with the attorney to make sure that they're aware. Look, there clearly isn't enough space in the east hall lot to, to meet the parking requirements for the orange tour. All the things we'd have to do. So you're going to have to replant that eventually. You're going to have to deal with the parking requirements. You're going to have to deal with all the building code requirements to renovate that building. Um, but similar to you know, the east hall renovation, they say, we understand all that. We'll deal with that down the road when we get there. Uh, we're just not ready to make any decisions as it relates uh, to that issue. And so I think that's this agreement in a nutshell. The other thing that was we really went back and forth on was I think the committee felt like there had to be some sort of teeth in the agreement. There had to be something that said, if they don't do what they're putting to do, what will happen? And we made a couple draft proposals and changes to that. Um, and where we basically landed was a little bit of damage law. It's in section four of that agreement. It says, look, if they breach the agreement, if they don't meet what is required of them under the terms of the agreement, we put them on notice of default of the agreement, have 90 days to cure and resolve that breach. If they don't resolve it within 90 days, they pay $10,000 for a damage assessment to the city. The city basically uses that to recoup the legal fees and the delay costs and all that sort of thing. And the city puts that down and, and brings whatever, say, building declarations or other ways we have to do at that point in time. Um, but we felt like, again, it had to be something there. We really put back on that. Uh, pretty hard, but ultimately in the last week or so, I finally agreed to, to keeping that in the agreement. So all ours are in agreement with this work? Yeah, I, I said a, a clean draft, you see, and a, a red line draft. There were a few changes they made um, this morning in draft that they sent to me. Um, I did have a chance to briefly talk to Jerry about it, as well as the language with Travis about it. I think all of the changes, we had stuff in there as it relates to, again, replanning all those lots together now. Um, the requirement to show you were uh, as an example, what exactly you're going to do in today's show us your plans and specs because you show us your plans and specs. Now we know there's going to be an issue when you go to try to pull a building permit. They've showed us some old architectural rendering of what exactly they wanted to do, but as I understand, that's still kind of in flux because they have short of contractor piece of this, and so they don't want to commit themselves to specific plans and specs until they have a contractor place, um, have an idea what thoughts on can just cleanly. Uh, so then they're standard taking that risk by not having this pre approved, so to speak. Things and best. Um, so all those things, I think that, that they take it out. They're not meaningful from the perspective of the city. They really are to make sure that 
that we don't have any snags in the next several months as from their perspective. So I suppose as long as they're, they're comfortable proceeding without it, there's not really a reason from the city's perspective to want that thing to be back there. I think the biggest thing that I want to speak for these guys here is uh, I think we're going, we need to get a signature on this thing. We need to get some commitment from them because the longer this delays, the longer it pushes out those deadlines for doing threats and completion. This is phase one, so to speak. It's not going to result in the complete com the completion of this development and everything connected there, too. Uh, so we really just need to get it, to get it done. So I don't know if you guys have any comment about changes or uh, my thought would be, and I don't think we're to the point where we do any first action because probably there are close. And so in my perspective, we probably would approve tonight Jerry um, executing the document on behalf of the city, or we would make that approval contingent on a couple changes that we want to see to the document. I think it's important to Dave being there, because uh, the guy that came to see you, the last year, so I think it's important that the DC in there, uh, probably, we thought we'd be since some action by now, hadn't happened, uh, so right now we're, we're going to be almost, the reason I'm they thought they would be done is basically that they could start. <laughs> no. Oh, the only comment that I have, Joe, and I apologize for not being to you in four, where it talks about we agree to forego any enforcement actions for nuisances. Again, I don't have a problem with that, but if they let their grass go to a foot tall, we're going to get complaints from the property owners. And so if there's any way we could just put grass in there, I don't know. Yeah, I, I can put something in there indicating, um, you know, basic nuisances. It's not that enforcement of the construction yeah. portion yeah. of the contract. Well, it's not an intent to, you know, it's not behind the back move where you don't. You don't know your grass, so we come in and mow it, and then we file a lien at your property. That's not my intention. I just want to, you know, if something happens in a grass isn't mowed, I still want to be able to have the ability to get out of grass. Yeah, I'll help those change that language to reflect that. I think the biggest thing here is, and it's just going to but I think it puts a lot to things trust one another. Um, but I think there's still some degree of distrust, and that's part of why we add some of these things in here is to, to make sure we're being as transparent as we possibly can to say, if this isn't, doesn't happen this time, we're going to proceed with this, right? That way, not to say we're trying to scare them or, or or, you know, be the bully, so to speak, but we just need to be clear with them as to our intention here. This is very encouraging for at this point. I also see a lot of saying uh, from all of you, and this is appreciate. Uh, it's, it's nice because we've talked about this property for a long, long time. This is encouraging. I guess I would make a motion to approve. Second. The motion to approve is seconded. We will approve the document with one no change to make that to. Problems. Yeah, that, I, I first started on a revised track. Only two changes are currently anticipated are to require the, the burning of those doors and windows we can make and door be a color tan, and then the issue with respect to general businesses as to the, the grass and vegetation. Okay. Any other questions? Roll on. Kitchen? Yes. Water? Yes. 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 Okay, that's our agenda. Uh, as for the audience comments, on anything that's not on the agenda, please come forward and state your name and address. It's really long time for that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that was, yeah. Well, it's the first. That's okay. I'm going to go on today. I'm Steve Olson. I'm at the other team. Let's just go back to the street. Small number of those here. Let's go on. Number one, 204 feet by 204 feet is an acre. So we want to play basketball for this big ball board. We want to have a little bit. So that's the next one. Yeah. Really wired, but I thought I'd talk about that one. Um, second, I was at the city planning meeting just the other day, and uh, I don't want to get her name for it, but it was a job voice for our asking for coffee kiosk. Um, I know the, the city planning commission, they approve that, the conditional use permit. I kind of want to remind uh, the city council that this may not be supposed to be upside money, but there's an outside firm that's trying to put the new business. But I think as those of you know, about, you know, I don't know you actually work for businesses that are supposed to be Wahoo based. There's a lot of that don't work for businesses that are Wahoo based. There's a lot of outside money already in Wahoo. I, I really encourage. Uh, council to approve the, the conditional purpose permit that comes up to your end. And we really hope that uh, in the future projects, whether it's a new building or a new business, that you do but substantially that outside people come in. Because I feel in the future, if we don't allow outside money to come in, that's when the city starts to die. Uh, if we say, well, we're going to do it ourselves, it won't happen. Uh, people vote with their feet, and or, or in this case, their cars. If, if you're not finding the service I need, I'll go out of town. And I think if, uh, like, say, John Boys is here, there might be some more coffee places, but be a former owner of one. We know that uh, we also more offer the coffee. We don't offer food. We offer places to just relax. We offer many different things. The coffee kiosk is a certain drive in, drive out. It's a convenience, and it's no different than, the, than any other convenience places, such as if a bird came down the drive out, many people still are there. Same with runs and all the others. It, it, it's one more convenience to offer the folks along with the I encourage, I encourage you to do for the other use for when it comes out. Um, third thing, we have a little bit of a thing for the walking path. 
Uh, I've used it a lot more times. I see it used every day. I think the story comes, even though it feels like story, that uh, what you have for the house will be used more and more. It's going to be it's a substantial addition. I think people walking up and down to school. In fact, if you kids were walking home from school with their backpack on, they saw that, so it is being used for, for detention. Uh, I told some of the thank yous. I didn't know if this morning would be proud or not. Thank the Lord you didn't have time because it was before this. Anyway, so, but, uh, but I think walking past is a great addition. Having the, the job already, that's going to be one more thing for, for people to get further down. Instead of picking the bus for a while, they're going to be able to walk down just a little further down the street on a nice path out of traffic, be able to use a wonderful dog park, and, and those are some wonderful additions I like to just the batteries and the river. A couple of real quick things. One is, I would say, is, is exploring putting up a solar panel farm for, I believe, the, the generation of electricity. And I'm wondering if there are going to be rebates and incentives on to homeowners to put up solar panels for electrical generation. So I don't know if that's a, if that's a utility or if that's a city thing, but I would, I would, I am actually, uh, Looking into it, some of that up, knowing that there's federal incentives currently available, and I would really hope that if the city is going to put up a, a electric generation area, that maybe would allow uh, residential customers to also uh, gain some sort of incentive from that. Uh, but I think it is being more also another first thing. Um, I knew that my home office already is. I've, I've, uh, it was allowed to uh, make it more beautiful last year. I would also love to end up north of it if I could, but I know I'll up against 14th Street, which is still a bad street. I was going to ask and wonder if they have any consideration in the future to vacate 14th Street and allow me to sit there and build just more trees or do something for my location. So that's really all I got. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anybody else in the public have any comments? Well, I, I've known the agenda. Uh, any comments on uh, this discussion? Um, I would comment that since we've been talking about Kent's um, uh, property up there, um, this building. I sat down with Perth meeting, uh, J.E.O. came, uh, two of their designers came with information uh, to Melissa and to, uh, Ryan, our utility manager, uh, brainstorming as to uh, maybe two or three different options, and they're going to move a little deeper into the weeds to see um, maybe what the cost might be uh, if we move forward uh, with uh, different ideas, uh, all the way from living with what we have, which I don't think is an option, uh, or converting us strictly to a safety facility with uh, police and uh, EMS and a uh, city looking at another facility for City Hall. Uh, so I think that's the broad spectrum of it. I'm not sure if there's a timetable uh, for that to come back, but it, it's being worked on. So uh, that's really um, and it's just more or less an update. So, um, Council members, any questions, comments that you have that have not been on the agenda that you want to run out? Say nothing. You did it all covered everything? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I think you should do the engineer of HX. So I, I believe we have a full site of uh, candidates for re election for the panel. Uh, as long as you go to the board, I'll send you a file. It's the paper that they need to hear. So, uh, okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, um, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, Okay, we you go there? No? Okay. No. I couldn't mean to hurt. Those are favorite sand.